Hey everyone, welcome to Inspire 101. My name is DJ and today we're gonna talk about why the next step is crucial. Why is the next step so crucial? Well, first of all, you're probably wondering, well, what is the first step? Well, the first step is when you give your life to Christ. When you give your life to Jesus, everything changes, right? You're filled with the Holy Spirit, you're made right with God, everything in that moment changes for you, your identity, everything. Your identity is in Christ. Man, your trajectory is towards heaven. It's incredible. That's the first step. It's the most important step. The first step, of course, will save you. And uh, here, but the next step will shape you. That's right. The first step will save you, right? Because you're giving your life to Christ. But the next step is so important also because why? It will shape you. If the first step begins your relationship with Jesus, the next steps makes you look more like Jesus. And that's why the next step, not just the next step, but the next steps are so important. And this is why it's crucial. You know, Pastor Mike will always tell us uh, here at staff, he'll say, hey, you got to strike while the iron is hot. Strike while the iron is hot. What does that even mean? Oh, well, it's it's really like this, this uh, blacksmith kind of term, right? Because when a blacksmith is maybe making, he's forging a sword, right? And what he does, he takes a piece of metal, he puts it in the, in the fire, gets it super hot, pulls it out, and while the iron is hot, he begins to strike it, and he begins to shape it into a sword. And the moment he pulls out of the fire, he needs to hit it. Why? Because if it cools down and you try to hammer it, it's not going to get formed or shaped. And such is our lives, that sometimes when we give our lives to Christ, the iron is hot, the momentum is there, and we need to start taking the next step right away. Otherwise, the distractions of life, other things get in the way, and suddenly we lose that momentum and we can prevent ourselves from stepping into that journey of really of growing in Christ, and that is by taking those next steps. It is so important. It's not just, uh, it's not just moving forward. Uh, it's not just moving forward. It's really us saying, hey, I'm going to follow Jesus. It's like Jesus says in Matthew 4.19. He says to his disciples, follow me and I'll make you fishers of men. You cannot follow someone if you're staying in one place. You'll just be left behind. It actually requires you to take some steps and not just any steps, but steps in the right direction direction. And so, you're becoming a disciple. You're becoming a learner. That's what disciple means. Someone who's following Jesus and becoming more like Jesus. And when you're a disciple, right, you become a disciple. And and you have to understand this, a disciple is always connected. When Jesus called his disciples, they became connected to a group, not only connected to Jesus, but to a group, a small community of people who they were around. And this is why Connection is necessary. And here's just three reasons why it's necessary. Connection is the next step. But the next step of connection is crucial because one, it this is what it does. It brings healing. It brings healing to our issues. That's right. Healing our issues. Connection is necessary because it's because of healing our issues. James 5, 16 says this. Therefore, confess your sins to each other. Who are the each others? That's the community of people you are around, other godly men and women. And it says, confess your sins to each other, pray for each other so that you may be healed. The prayer of a righteous person is powerful and effective. Yes, the moment you give your life to Christ, you're forgiven, you're changed, but there's still some stuff you gotta work out. There's still some healing from issues in the past you gotta work out. And what you need community, you need you need the each others, the one another's in your life so that you can begin to see healing happen because of the confession, sharing with one another, people praying for you, absolutely necessary. And that happens when there is connection. Another thing why connection is necessary, because not only is it healing our issues, but then it's also discovering our part. That's right. There's a part we all play. This is what 1 Corinthians says in in chapter 12. Paul says there are different kinds of spiritual gifts, but the same Spirit is the source of them all. There are different kinds of service, but we serve the same Lord. God works in different ways, but is the same God who does the work in all of us. A spiritual gift, check this out, is given to each of us so we can help each other, right? There's a gift given to every single one of us so that we can help one another. Verse 18 goes on to say, our bodies have many parts, and God has put each part just where he wants it. All of you, verse 27 says, all of you together are Christ's body and each of you is a part of it. We play a part. You play a part in the body of Christ. God has designed you uniquely. He's got a calling for you and a purpose for you. We discover that when we are part of, when we are connected. We begin to see the part that we play. We begin to discover what body part of mine God's 
overall body, the body of Christ. You discover your part when you're connected. You discover your purpose. Number three, not only is it healing our issues, not only is it discovering our part, but number three, it helps us to walk out our faith. We need to be connected. We need to take that next step of connection to walk out our faith. Hebrews 10, 24 tells us, let us think of ways to motivate one another to acts of love and good works. Paul writes us because sometimes we're not motivated. Sometimes we can sit back. Sometimes we can get complacent and not live out our, walk out our faith. And when we walk out our faith, we actually grow in our faith. So he has to tell the people, or it's not Paul, but the author of Hebrews has to tell the people, hey, Let's think of ways. Let's get together. Don't stop meeting up because we're going to think of ways to motivate one another to live out our faith, to live out the love of God, and to do good things for one another. Three powerful things right there of why we need to take the next step of getting connected. Why? Healing our issues, discovering our part, and walking out our faith. And you can say, well, what can I do, DJ? What? How do I can get connected? Two great ways. Connect groups and serving on the dream team. Very practical ways, connect groups, bring you into a community of people where you have a place to confess your sins, you have a place to pray for one another, you have a place to ask questions, to talk about the scriptures, to talk about the, 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 the sermon, and that's where you can see that growth and build those relationships. Get connected in a connect group. And also you can get connected to one another through serving on the dream team. Be a part of a team, serving in a ministry. That's where you begin to discover, man, this is the gifts that God's given you. This is the part that I can play. And, um, and this is how I can walk out my faith. Serving on the dream team. Two really practical ways to take a next step. Keep coming back every Sunday or every weekend to service, but get connected to a connect group and also connected onto a dream team and that is the best next steps you can take when you've given your life to Jesus. That's Inspire 101 on why the next step is so crucial. Take care, guys. God bless. Mm -hmm.